everyone, Denise from Salvaged Inspirations and thanks for joining me today. It's my goal to inspire you to take your salvaged furniture and make it into something fabulous. So today I have a great example. I picked up this mid-century modern three drawer Kaufman dresser from my local restore. I'm not usually one to gravitate to MCM or mid-century modern pieces, however something about this little one called my name. It is adorable. I'm also sharing a nifty little tool that I found at a flea market to help me sand rounded corners and also how I stain match an existing stain. So just let me get set up and I'll be right back. So I found this three door Kaufman mid-century dresser at my local restore and it was selling for $80. Uh, the top and body weren't in the best of condition but the drawers were near perfect. I started prepping this piece by giving it a really, really good cleaning. Um, and I know I've mentioned this before on my blog, but when I clean my furniture, I always think if it's not clean enough to put my underwear in, it's not clean enough. <laughs> and I know that's kind of a weird analogy, but um, I think a lot of people kind of forget how important it is to clean these pieces top bottom inside me being no different I actually remember when I started selling my furniture I was so focused on the exterior paint finish that there were a good few occasions that I forgot to clean the bottom of the piece and I do remember there were a few times when we were loading a piece into the purchaser's vehicle and I saw the cobwebs on the bottom and I have to admit I was a little embarrassed I, I felt a little unprofessional so a really good cleaning is mandatory and in this case I use Dixie Bell's white lightning which is a TSP substitute but even if you don't have access to TSP or white lightning you could use a little bit of Dawn dish liquid with warm water or even water and vinegar will do a nice job after everything was really clean and all dry, I moved on to the drawer touch-ups. And as I mentioned, these drawers were in really good shape, except for tiny little imperfections in the stain. And to fix this, I used this trade secret touch-up marker to hide the imperfections, and it worked amazing. I have a few of these trade secret markers in my inventory. They come in different colors, light, medium, dark, and they match different wood stains, but it's been so long since I've used them, I forgot how great they work. Um, I would not suggest using this for large imperfections because it might be quite noticeable, but for tiny little scratches or, or little dings, it's actually perfect and it's so easy. Literally colored in the stain imperfections with this marker. Once the front of the drawers were all fixed up, I had to move on to fixing the drawer slides on the interior. Two of them were, well, they weren't in very good shape, so they <laughs> needed replacing. Um, I found these two drawer slides that I actually had from a curb shop piece. Uh, I just, I keep these pieces because you never know when they're gonna come in handy. And they did fit just perfectly, so I went and used them. I just had to cut out the notch, so I started by removing the old drawer slides, the two that were in pretty bad shape. And then I measured out the notch on my new drawer slide. And I did this by just placing them together. And then I also used my ruler to measure how deep the cut was actually going to go. And this is so the drawer slide can sit on that uh, wood piece inside the drawer. To make the cuts, I used my oscillating tool, which is awesome. I've used it for sanding, for cutting, etc. 
even though this is not gonna look good, <laughs> uh, I must have used the wrong blade to cut through this hardwood because it ended up smoking on me. I'm sure uh, the blade is probably kaput at this, at this point, uh, but it did the job and it did cut through the four notches that I needed so it fit into the dresser nicely. I'm really trying to get better with using my tools and getting more comfortable with them. If anybody has any suggestions as to what I did wrong here and why my wood was smoking so much and what maybe what blade I should have used in place of this one, I would love to hear down in the comments below because I'm really, really trying to learn. Um, in fact, I decided to take the skirt off this piece to do the sanding as well, the sanding and staining, because uh, my new goal is to really try and get uh, the tools out working for me a little bit more and learn the assembly and uh, repairs on furniture as well. So if any of you have any tips for me, I'm all ears. I would love to learn. I'd really like to learn more about assembling uh, furniture. And as I mentioned, getting more comfortable with my tools. So what I did is, I guess I thought inch by inch, right? I guess a good way to learn is starting to take furniture apart and see how it's all put together. So I actually dismantled the bottom skirt and legs of this piece. Uh, and and also not just to learn but also because it's so much easier to sand and stain because I did know that I wanted to match the stain of the drawers to the bottom of the skirt and the legs. The skirt and legs were very easy to remove. I actually just flipped the piece over and unscrewed, I think there was about eight screws holding it in uh, along with a little clamp so that was easy enough to take off. I know I also mentioned in one of my other videos about these little uh, bumper feet for furniture or feet bumpers or I'm not even sure exactly what they're called but one of my pet peeves is having them painted <laughs> so I did remove the four uh, before I painted it as well. To remove the finish on the bottom of this piece before uh, it could accept stain, I removed the old stain using my DeWalt 5 inch orbital sander. I started with an 80 grit, I moved up to 120 and then 220. And when you're sanding furniture, if it's to get an existing finish off, you wanna start with a very rough sandpaper. That could be a 60 or an 80, depending on the finish of the furniture. 80 was definitely sufficient for this finish. Uh, it came off really easy peasy. And then again, I work my way up to the higher grit sandpapers so it smooths out any of the aggressive sandpaper marks that may have been left on the wood. Now here's something really fun. I found this odd looking tool in a flea market and it looks handmade. I picked it up for $2. It's just a piece of wood, a moon shaped piece of wood. And what they did was they stapled a piece of cardboard onto it. But the interesting thing is it's it has a lot of give. So when you use it around uh, soft edges or rounded edges. It worked amazing. And then I was kicking myself that I didn't pick up a few more of these. Um, I just picked it up as a fluke. I just thought, oh, okay, this is interesting. I'll give it a whirl. But I was really impressed with how well it worked. And for $2, like I said, I wish I had picked up a few more. I guess they'd be easy enough to make though. If you just did like a wood handle and put a strip of uh, sandpaper and stapled it on, I guess it would be uh, something very easy to hand make. Once I had the bottom finish all sanded off and nice and smooth, I pulled out a few colors of stains to match the bottom skirt and legs to the existing stain on the drawers. Now, I'm not that experienced matching stains, so it's really trial and error for me. Uh, luckily, I have a variety of stains on hand to play with. Uh, I think it would be a lot more frustrating if I had to go buy a few colors from Home Depot not knowing if they would work or not. Uh, but I will say for, let's say, the $10 for a small can of stain, even if you bought two or three stains for $20 or $30 for the, a perfect match, 
it's still well worth the time and effort and still way less expensive than investing in say a new quality piece of furniture. Uh, so I ended up using American Oak by General Finishes and I put, I believe, two coats of uh, American oak on for the base, which had like a reddish tone to it. And for the top, I used Minwax Chestnut, and that equaled a perfect match, or pretty darn close, I would say. I'd love to hear what you guys think as well. Um, to match the stain, like I said, I looked at the prominent base color which had quite a bit of red in it, and I took it from there. I always test on the back of a piece, or I say a back of a leg. You wanna test in an inconspicuous area to do your test matching, uh, because, well, for me, if I blotch up, it's easy to sand down the leg and say, give it another try. Uh, another tip is always wait until the stain is dry. If you're mixing and matching stains, uh, they will look different when they're wet, of course, to when they dry. So you want your, your mixed stains to dry totally 100% and then hold it against the piece that you're trying to match it so you actually get a true color. On to the body of this piece. Uh, I took out my trusty DeWalt Orbital Sander with a 120 grit sandpaper and started sanding the entire body. And this was to give the entire piece some tooth or, uh, you know, a good scuffing up so the primer has something to grip onto. Uh, for the drawer rails, uh, the front drawer rails, I, in my original thought, I wanted them stained the same color as the drawers but more on this later. <laughs> it, didn't, it didn't turn out that way and I'm very, very pleased it didn't. Um, so what I did again was I just gave this full piece a scuff sanding. Uh, the top, uh, somebody on my blog mentioned that it looks like malamine uh, up top there. And I can, or no, I'm sorry, she said formica. And I can see where she's going with that, but it's actually a wood top. I've worked with a few of these MCM pieces and I don't know what kind of finish they put on top of this wood, but it does look very slick and shiny. Um, I don't know, some sort of varnish or shellac. And, and uh, I can see where she was going with that when she said it looked like formica. So the top really needed a really, really good scuff sanding as well. So the primer would stick. And BIN, bin, B -I -N, I call it BIN, it's B-I-N shellac based primer. Um, if you've watched any of my past videos, you know that's my go-to when it comes to projects that will most likely have bleed through, but it has excellent adhesion. So I. I wasn't worried about it. Once this was sanded and primed with the BIN shellac base primer, I knew that the paint was gonna stick just fine. For the priming, I add the BIN shellac base primer to a paper plate. I also use a dollar store foam roller, and this is so everything is easily uh, dis disregarded after I'm finished with it. Um, BIN shellac base primer does have an odor to it, so make sure that you have very good ventilation if you're working with it. Um, and it goes on very easy and it dries super fast. Um, I can be putting a second coat of this shellac base primer on within a half hour and I can actually be painting within an hour. Um, I do sand in between each and every coat uh, just to knock down any um, of little particles or, or dust or any unevenness in the primer uh, to give the smoothest, smoothest finish. After I finished priming the piece, I took the time to use some painter's tape and mask off the drawer rails. Waste of time. <laughs> I should have just primed all at the beginning uh, because I ended up taking a different direction with this dresser. Now, finally, for some color. I ended up using Dixie Belle's Silk All-in-One Mineral Paint in the color Serenity. It's a gorgeous blue-green, yet it's a little muted, um, and it 
really, I thought it would play off nicely with the very warm wood of the drawers and, and it didn't steer me wrong. It's, it's it beautiful, beautiful, beautiful color. I'm really pleased with it. Um, I did thin it with 10% water before putting it into my Husky spray gun. Uh, this just makes it easier to spray. Silk all-in-one mineral paint is an all-in-one. It does have a primer. It also has a top coat. Um, that said, I had already added primer because I wasn't sure what color or what type of paint I was gonna use at that time, so it has extra protection. And I ended up top coating it, uh, but more on that after. I sprayed two coats of Serenity, and then I plopped the top of the piece onto the skirt just to see um, what I was working with. I, I put the drawers back in. I wanted to make sure that the skirt uh, stain matched the drawers properly, and I just wanted to take a look at what everything would look like. And the thing was, is when I saw the green tape peeking through, uh, the drawer rails and peeking through the drawers. I thought no, I don't want them stained I actually want them blue the same color as the piece So I ended up taking off the masking tape and then I had to backtrack and actually prime again with bin shellac primer so no bleed through would come through and then I went ahead and I painted the dresser rails with serenity um, and it all got two coats and then I was actually happy with how it was looking. The funny thing with furniture refinishing or furniture painting is it kind of takes a direction of its own. I can't tell you how many times uh, in my mind I see how a piece is going to look and I start in that direction. And then as I'm working with it, you know, it can, it can turn out totally different. <laughs> it really can, but that's part of the fun. You just kind of go with the flow and you do the tweaks as you go along and work on the project. And in the end, hopefully it turns out beautiful. Once the paint was dry and of course the stain on the bottom, it was time to top coat. And I used Dixie Belle's Satin Clear Coat. I did water it down ever so slightly, I'm guessing maybe 5%. And how I like it is the consistency of, say, a thick milkshake. So if it runs off my mixer and it looks like, uh, like I said, the consistency of thick milkshake, I know I've got it right for my sprayer. Uh, I did also run it through a filter and the reason being is because it is in a container that's been opened and closed. There's some dry pieces around the lip of the container. So I just want to make sure none of that actually gets into my top coat. So I ended up spraying two coats of uh, satin clear coat on the entire piece and on the bottom skirt and legs. For the finishing touch, I lined the drawers. Um, I had this heavy duty vinyl that I had found at a restore when my sister and I were, I don't even remember what city it was in, but often when you know we're out and about and we see a restore, oh my God, I, I turn the car around. <laughs> I turned that car around and I gotta go check it out. So in this particular restore, I found these um, bolts of vinyl upholstery fabric. I believe it's actually used to cover, like say restaurant seats. It's not, it doesn't feel like a slippery material, but it's very easily cleaned. Like you can tell that anything could get spilled on it. It'll just wipe right up. Um, so I found about seven, eight of these remnants uh, on, on these bolts and I just love them. And I finally found a great piece to use it on because the colors tied in beautifully. The pattern was perfect for the mid-century modern piece. And I couldn't be happier with the way it looks. Lining the drawer was very easy. I just measured the inside of the drawer and then I cut the upholstery fabric to fit exact. 
Um, I often don't glue down my drawer liners. I know I've been asked that a few times. And the reason being is whoever purchases this piece, if they don't like it, it's just easily removable. Whereas if I was to glue it down and adhere it and then they don't like it and they're trying to pull it up, I mean, it just makes no sense. If the purchaser would like to adhere it themselves, they're more than happy to, or if they ask me to do that for them, I'm more than happy to do it. Uh, however, there have been a few pieces where, I remember one in particular, it was, um, a vanity and I had lined it with I think it was leopard print or cheetah print or something I thought it looked fabulous <laughs> but and the man who came to pick it up thought it was great but he said he has to remove it before his wife sees that because she's gonna hate it <laughs> no worries so when you're lining your drawers it's up to you whether you like to adhere it or not but if the piece is for sale sometimes that can be a decision a decision kind of maker whether they're going to purchase or not if they cannot remove those liners so here's how it all came together once again here's the before and here's the after I'm so glad that I actually decided to paint those dresser rails in the serenity so it peeks through behind the wood I think the little peekaboo detail on this dresser is adorable and I couldn't be more thrilled with how it turned out I hope you found this tutorial helpful and you enjoyed the before and after if you found any value in the video please give it a like if you have any suggestions or comments I would love to hear from you down in the comments I so appreciate all your comments and all your support um, I'm really trying to grow my YouTube channel and I can't tell you how fabulous it makes me feel when I get some interaction and if you have any suggestions on what you would like to see some questions that you may have about furniture painting or furniture makeovers, leave them down below also and I'll do my best to answer them and maybe it might even give me an idea for more videos. So I would really appreciate it. Uh, you can also find me on Pinterest, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, I'm trying to think of them all. Uh, and of course, as always, salvagedinspirations.com where I have over 400 furniture painting tutorials teaching you how to make your furniture beautiful. Until next time, stay safe, have a fabulous day, and I'll see you again. Bye guys.